it's still possible to analyze systems when non-conservative forces act. We just need to know what the non-conservative work is. Another way to think about this is that we're now able to model more of reality, and here we'll explain how to do it. So here's how non-conservative work figures in conservation of energy problems. The total work done on a system is equal to its change of kinetic energy. That's the work energy theorem. Another way to put the total work is that the total work done on an object is the conservative work done on it plus the non-conservative work done on it. The conservative work done is just the negative of the change in potential energy because that's the work that the potential did. So then we see that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the non-conservative work done minus the change in potential energy. We can rearrange that to tell us the non-conservative work done. It's the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. When you think about it, this makes perfect sense. This is saying that the non-conservative work done is the change in mechanical energy. And that makes sense. When there's only conservative forces acting, there is no change in mechanical energy. So to have a change in mechanical energy, that has to be from a non-conservative force acting. And the change in mechanical energy is that non-conservative work done. Another way to phrase this that's sometimes useful is to start off with what we had before. The change in kinetic energy is equal to negative of the potential energy change plus the non-conservative work done. So here I've just expanded the delta parts. Little rearrangement, the mechanical energy of state 2 is equal to the mechanical energy of state 1 plus the non-conservative work done going from state 1 to state 2. When can you use this to solve a problem? Likely times that it shows up would be when you're, say, trying to find the speed of an object at different positions when you know all the forces that are acting and you know their dependence on position. Also, you can use this to find where something stops, such as the high point in an arc, or how far something rolls up a ramp. Also, it sometimes can be used to find a non-conservative force. If you know mechanical energy at one point, and mechanical energy at another point, you know how that's changed, and so you know how much non-conservative work has been done. Though this is a powerful technique, one thing that it's not very good for is finding times. Since potentials are expressed in terms of positions, this is good for finding position-dependent information, but not so good for finding time-dependent information. So what's actually happening in these systems when we're talking about conservative forces and non-conservative forces? Total energy is actually conserved even when these so-called non-conservative forces are acting. But it's not mechanical energy in the sense that it's not energy that can be used to provide useful work for us. What's going on? is that this missing energy is either transferred between the system and the surroundings, or is converted to some other form that won't give useful work, such as thermal motion. 